Hi everyone. Welcome to Uncommon Necessities. We'll give it a few minutes to see if our friends will join. And like we've got two people say hello type in hello if you're here hi Kendra welcome welcome to my page this is our very first live ever and um, just getting started with this so bear with me if uh, we have some bloopers along the way welcome friends Hopefully the music's not too loud. Um, another small business next to me um, is called Vinyl Injections and uh, he sells records. So he sells vinyl. So, welcome. All right, say hello if you're just coming in. Welcome friends. Hi, Kay. Bear with me. Oh, it's Sherman. Hi, Sherman. Bear with me as today is my very first day going live. So, hmm? very first day going live. And we've got something really fun in store. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to make this great picture right here. And I'm going to show you how to use some of the products that we have in our store. Um, simple, easy things to do. Um, yeah. And I'm going to try and go live every Saturday. I don't know yet exact time, but every Saturday you'll be able to find me here um, doing a project with you. So to get us started, there is a few simple things you'll need for this. And um, I got these boards already pre-cut and actually there's a couple of different sizes at our local hardware store. So you'll need a board and uh, we have some chalk paint here in the color buttercream. And so buttercream is just a, a real um, kind of off white um, light cream color so we'll be using that um, we'll use flat clear coat flat and I'll go over the reason for the clear coat as we're doing the project we'll be using best dang wax in the color brown and that helps gives us some antiquing along the side and then iron orchid design We'll be using this great stamp set. So we have large stamps um, that are great for many different projects. And so we'll use this one today, but we're, we're only gonna be using a portion of it. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Another item we'll be using today for our project is Iron Orchid Design Transfers. And so we'll go through these and decide what picture we want on our picture. That sounded funny. What picture we want on our picture? <laughs> so we'll go through a couple of those and take a look at those. The other items you need for the stamping is um, ink. And so Iron Orchid Design, we have, um, this is the black ink. And this is permanent ink and you can use this on all sorts of different things. So you can use it on wood, fabric, um, clay pots, canvas, whatever you want. So we'll get started and go through that. All right. I hope everyone is having a great day today. Hi, Miss Nicole. It's so great. It's so wonderful to see everybody here. Thanks for joining us today, friends. 
All right, so let's get us started. So the very first thing I want to do is, this is just a cup with some hot water in it to rinse my, my brush. Um, I'm just using a regular art brush, nothing fancy. And please ask any questions. Um, I can read your comments up there. Um, I won't be able to type anything, but I can certainly answer your questions. And if I miss it, um, I'll go back and look at them and get an answer for you. All right. Okay. So we're going to use Dixie Belle uh, buttercream chalk paint. And <clears throat> we have this in our store and we have all sorts of colors. Actually, we have 64 colors just to be exact. Um, and so you can paint all sorts of great things. All right. This might be a little boring, but we'll get it started. So you just paint your surface, nothing fancy to this. Easy peasy. You don't even have to sand your project first. You don't need to do any special prep to it. Um, <clears throat> the only time if you're doing things like furniture um, where you're gonna <clears throat> redo a piece of furniture, uh, you wanna make sure you clean the furniture really well um, with cleaners. Um, to get off any oils or anything like that. You might want to sand down any uh, rough spots. Um, and then um, you can start painting with um, chalk paint. So we'll just give this a good coat. And actually chalk paint doesn't take long to dry either. It only takes literally just a couple of minutes. Not long. And one coat on projects like this is usually pretty good. Sometimes you might need a second coat, um, but usually one coat is pretty good. And I'll get the edges real quick. hope everyone is having a great day. Here it's been kind of uh, rainy off and on and sometimes it makes me think are we almost in the month of June because it's still kind of cool here. Anybody doing anything fun this weekend for the holiday? I'm actually going to have um, our shop open on Monday and uh, so that's my holiday plans. Any other holiday plans? Although probably have a lot more plans if it was sunny out. It's almost too cold to be outside. It's supposed to be 77 on Wednesday? Wow, maybe summer is going to come. That would be great. Get a little sunshine. Is there anybody who's not from the Port Orchard area on? If you if you um, want to say where you're from, see it's already drying really quickly. So, oops, I missed the end. Let me get that really quick. And then, um, okay, all right, that looks pretty good. All right, Disney, that's right, you're going to Disney. Man, you get to go see the mouse. I'm excited for you. Well, you'll be going to where it's warm then. That'll be nice. That'll be definitely nice. Oh, how fun. I forgot all about that, Miss Nicole. Are the kids all excited? 
A low of 75? Oh my, I'm jealous. I mean, I know I just came back from a Disney thing, but it was warm and 75 would be nice. All right, as you can tell, I'm a little bit of a messy painter. Ooh, oh, that's right. You're going to work on some beachy stuff. Oh, man. You know, any time to craft is a good time to craft, is a good day to craft. I love, I love crafting. All right, so... We're going to give that a minute to dry. So let's talk about stamps a little bit. Because that's actually going to be our next step. So. Stamps come in these packages. And when you take them out of the package. And the one thing I don't have. That I wish I had. Oh. Actually, I do. At least for demonstration purposes. Happy accident, sometimes it's just meant to be. All right. They'll come in and they'll look like this. And so there's two pieces of plastic on them. <clears throat> and what you would do is you take off the piece of plastic on the back. So you see how you have everything on the front and then on the back it's open. Can you see that? Okay. The thing about stamps is that when you first get your stamps, what you want to do is you want to take a piece of sandpaper and you want to give it a good um, wiping on it. It's scuffing up the stamp so that way the stamp can accept ink. So you want to go one direction and then you turn it and go the other direction. Now the sanding only has to be very brief. So literally just going like this and then the other direction over it like that is plenty. You don't need to do any more than that. And what that does is it gives you, um, gives your surface um, a place for the ink to go onto um, for stamping. Now the other thing with stamps is you can cut these apart um, or you can leave them on the sheet and use them on the sheet. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take it off the sheet and if you notice, they're kind of hard to pull up. Don't worry, you will never, you won't tear them, you won't rip it or anything. And this way, if you want more control, you can just place it on another back piece of plastic or whichever. Let me get my scissors here. And let's say I just want a small area so I can just cut this out. And now I have my stamp on just a piece of plastic so now I have better control over just this one stamp. Then all you would do is peel it off. You can either put this in some soapy water um, right after you use it, you either want to put it in some soapy water or I prefer baby wipes, um, but you want to wipe that ink off or at least put it in water until you can wash it. So for this project, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave the stamps on this page and we're only going to use a portion of it because I like the layout the way it is. So, this is becoming dry. It's almost dry. All right. So the portion I wanted to use, if you look at this, it actually is this piece right here, this section of the board, just like that. And what's great about these stamps is because they're these um, kind of like flat, thin stamps, which are very durable, you can put these on any surface. So you could put it on um, cloth, wood, 
plastic, whatever you would like. But the great thing is, is that they bend. So you can bend it around any curved surface. So if I wanted to do this jar, I can just stamp it right on there and you'll have a nice stamp that's flexible and goes around curved, sur curved surface. All right. And um, any questions about the stamps? Are the stamps reusable? Yes, they are absolutely reusable. You can use them over and over and they're very durable. They last a long time. Um, I have done many, many stamping projects um, over the last couple of years and I'll tell you, I am amazed on how well these stamps hold up. Um, you will still have the same definition after many, many uses um, of the stamp. As long as you take care of it by putting it in water right after you use it or wipe it off with a baby wipe, they are good to go. And then you just sit to store them, you just put them right back on the same plastic sheet um, that they were on. And I don't know, it depends. Sometimes I put them right back into the same um, folder, plastic, um, or sometimes if I want, um, I might just put them in a plastic baggie. Um, letters I tend to put in plastic bags just because it's easier. Um, but yeah, great question. All right, we are almost dry. Now the ink, a little bit about the ink. The ink is a black, this one's a black permanent ink. And IOD has um, stamp pads. And when you get, first get the stamp pad, it's, it's just um, a cream color. Um, I should have brought one of my ink bottles over here. Sorry about that, I'll bring them next time. Um, all you would do is take the ink bottle and dab it on top of the pad. It'll kind of drip out and as you're dabbing, um, it helps to get it below the surface on the pad. And then, um, oh, I have a delivery of an ink bottle. Okay, so here's the ink bottle. So all you would do is just squeeze the bottle and then put the ink on the ink pad like that. And you want to fully saturate the pad. Um, and one of these bottles lasts many, many, many projects. So a lot of different colors. There's, we have ocean blue, we have greens, we have um, yellows. Um, so lots of great different choices there. Um, when you store your ink pad, you always want to store your ink pad upside down. And that way the ink is always at the top of your pad. The other trick um, to this is because the black and the gray looks very similar in your ink pad, you can see I actually write on my ink pad which ink this is so I don't get confused because it's very easy to do. <clears throat> very easy. All right, this is just about dry, so let's go ahead and stamp up our pad. Any questions? So for stamping on your pad, um, on your stamps, you don't have to use a lot of ink. You don't have to use a lot of pressure. Um, I typically like to stamp um, while it's on the plastic, um, but you can certainly um, take the stamp if you want and you can put the stamp on the pad this way as well whichever you find easiest let me put this back on here all right I'm so happy that everyone has joined us today thanks for coming you guys um okay so you just lightly press up and down on your stamp pad or on the stamp with the stamp pad and you don't have to be terribly precise for this project because um, if I have too much ink over here and it doesn't fit on there it won't hurt anything now what I will tell you is if you have a pad a stamp 
that you've stamped and you've pressed hard. Let me show you an example. If you've pressed hard, what you will get is you see how you can get ink all around the edge of whatever piece of plastic you're using, but it also goes around the edge of your stamp. And so you have to be really careful that when when you're stamping, that's why I say just use really light press, pressure um, because you don't want all this extra ink on your project. And so there's a couple of ways you can um, fix it if it happens. A, you can always just start over, wipe it off and start over. Or if you want, um, I found that Q-tips work. If I get just a little bit of ink, I don't know if you can see it, but you see how there's just a little bit of ink around the edge there? If you want to just be able to wipe off that, you can use a Q-tip to do it. Um, but wipies work really good. And so you can just wipe it right off. All right. So those are some little tips about the stamping pads and the stamps. All right. So I think this is pretty good and covered. Let me just make sure I get that top up there. All right. Okay. Now, let's put this back on. Turn this over. All right. I don't think you can see too much of a difference. Maybe you can. Between where, well, I guess you can between where I inked and where I didn't ink. So I don't see any ink around my edges. So I think we're pretty good there. So now I just wanna take my board. I wanna turn this around and forgive me, but I gotta stand up so I can make sure I get this lined up straight. And all you wanna do is just line up your project now, once you drop it down, you've committed. So if it's crooked, that's okay. We don't, crooked just makes it have more character. It's all good. Um, and then you just put, place it down. All right. And then you lightly, well, not lightly, I guess, pretty firmly. You wanna press, I don't know if you can see this, Maybe want to get down further. <clears throat> you just want to press with your fingers straight down. Don't do any rubbing motion um, or side to side because that actually will cause your um, stamp to move a little bit and it will smear on you. So you just press firmly in each of the spots. And I'll tell you, um, one of the things I've learned over time is to really make sure you press in the middle. Sometimes you think you've pressed in the middle of a stamp and then you pull it off and you, and you didn't quite get the ink all the way down. So make sure you don't forget the middle of the stamp. Really give it a good press. All right. Okay, I think, I think we're on. Okay, now the other trick with these is you want to lift straight up. So you just lift straight up, just like that. So you saw how much I was pressing, right? Which actually is good because you can um, also control the amount of ink and faded makes it look even more vintagey, right? So that way, um, you can kind of decide how much you want to end up on your project. But I pressed pretty firmly and some of the ink still didn't go down. But that's okay. All things can be worked with when it comes to making art. All right. Now, did I see that... Uh, Did I see Joseph's on? Is Joseph here with us today? All right. 
now that we got that all done, oh my gosh, we're getting to the really fun part. The really fun part is adding in all the transfers and looking at those and deciding what you want to do. That's the really fun part. All right, so just rinsing my brush off. All right. Typically, I would let this dry a little bit more. I should have had a um, heat tool, but I forgot that. It's my first live. Things you learn. So I'm just gonna blot this a little bit. You don't normally have to do this, but just in the interest of time, I just wanna pull some of that excess ink up so we can do our next step. All right. Come on, good. All right. Maybe if I can get my jar open. Oh, there, I got it. All right. So the next step we're doing is clear coat and I'm doing it in flat. Now we have it in satin, we have it in gloss, but for this particular project, I wanted it to look um, vintage-y and, and older, um, so I went with flat. All of these things are water-based products, so they're easy cleanup, easy to use. That's what's great about them. And so, great question, Sherman. So my thought is, is that I will post um, on my page the project that will be coming up for the weekend um, for Saturday and I'll post all the items that we would be using so if you wanted to either come in and get those items or maybe you already have some items that are similar and you want to try and use those um, so that way if you wanted to be able to follow along step by step you could pick up those items um, on Thursday or Friday when we're open. But you might have similar items already in your crafting supplies. Um, so take a look. But I will um, post those. And since we're open on Monday this week, I am going to post that on Monday for our project. And I'll kind of give you a sneak peek of what I think um, will be a good project for next Saturday. Um, and then um, that way you'll know what we're what we're gonna do together. All right. Oh, it's so great having you guys all here. This is so much fun. All right. So now we're just gonna put on, we're just gonna brush on a light coat of the um, clear coat, top coat. Again, this is another quick item to dry. It dries pretty quickly. But I've learned I need to have my heat tool for the next live. <laughs> Don't forget my heat tool. Now you can use a hair dryer to dry your projects quickly if you want. And um, <clears throat> that may be what we do next weekend as well. I think some of the reason my ink um, didn't go down is because it wasn't completely dry underneath the base coat. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it was completely dry in these areas too. So that was part of the, um, the reason it um, didn't. Oh look, I have a heat tool. My helper, my husband, is helping. Uh, courtesy of Dana's poor expressions. Oh, Dana's poor expressions. One of my neighbors down here at the Town Square Mall, she came through with a heat tool for me. Thank you, Dana. You're awesome. You guys, if you um, have a chance, you need to come visit Dana. She does poor uh, artwork and you can do it and she has lots of great techniques. And tonight happens to be um, canvas and cocktails. Canvas and cocktails, that's what it's called. And so at six o'clock. 
So if you want to do that, you know, give Dana a call and come on down or come on down at six here at the Town Square Mall. Now, <clears throat> all right. So I put the layer of clear coat down and I don't know if you can see this, but I'll show you. Because it wasn't quite, the ink wasn't quite dry, you might see a little smudging of the ink. And actually it looks like I missed a spot too. Now, the reason for the clear coat is not only to protect your project, of course, but when you're working with transfers, it actually makes the transfer go on much easier to your project. I mean, you can certainly put the transfer down without putting a clear coat down, but putting the clear coat really helps it, um, really helps it adhere to your project. Okay, so you can see I put the clear coat down. So what we've done so far is we've done paint, a stamp, and clear coat. And so let me get my little heat tool right here. Thank you again, Dana. I appreciate it. Sorry for the noise, guys. Um, so, <clears throat> the other thing that's going on down here at the Town Square Mall on June 4th, there will be a casino night for a charitable cause. And it's um, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. So if you want something to do uh, next Saturday night, uh, you can certainly come down and join this for casino night. Um, the store will be open. It's amazing how fast things dry with the heat tool. <laughs> Makes life much simpler. All right, this is looking pretty good. Looking really good, all right. Sorry about that. Now we should be done. Okay, so now, you see it's flat. So there's no shine or gloss or anything to this. Okay, now this is where I think the really fun part comes in. Okay, now we get to pick which picture we want to put, because remember, this is where we're going, what picture we want to add on our picture. So I brought a couple of different transfers with me, and... I wanted to share those with you. Okay. So this one's called the Botanist Journal. And this one. So what's great about these transfers is that you can do a big project um, or you can do small projects or a combination. There is so many transfers in each package that you can kind of decide what you want to do. And another key note, always save your scraps, always. Because you'd be amazed at what you can do with some of the tiniest little fragments of the transfer that you didn't use. All right, let me show you this. So, there are so many options with these. So you can see in my book how I've used bits and pieces of these transfers. And I've just cut them out and used what I wanted for whatever project. So, <clears throat> let's look through this one. Is there any on this one that we want to use? I think
This one I think would be too big. That one might work. I don't know if you can see. So you see the flower there? So I could trim this out and this flower would fit on here. So that's an option. And then let's see. I have this other one that I'm really excited to try as well. So let's take a peek in that one and see what there is. And then I'll have you guys vote for which one we use. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay, this one is called the Brocant Transfer. On the back of each one of these packages, you, you'll see as well, is it shows you what all the different transfers are that come in that package. It also gives you examples of how you can use those transfers. So, for instance, um, you can use the whole package on a set of dressers, or they show you where a serving tray where they used one piece of the transfer. So let's see what's in this transfer. So this transfer has a lot of different pictures. It also has some printed pieces. Eiffel Tower. Um, a great big rose and flower. Um, these are great, like, they're like labels or, or just pictures you want to put on something. Oh, there's even a giant clock face as well. Um, some others. Here's the bird transfer. Here's some chickens and rooster. Those are kind of cool. And then birds. And then some more individual flowers. I don't know if you can see all these things. Sorry, just getting used to the angles here. All right, so there's a couple of few things in here we could do. Um, I think the one that stands out to me is, where is it? One that stands out to me is this blue blue flower back here. So this one would fit on here and look pretty cool. So we have that flower or I think it was this section. Or this flower. So, which one should we do? Blue or red? Or pink? Whatever color that is. Blue or pink? You guys tell me. Blue. Blue. Look at all these great votes for blue. Okay, blue it is. Blue it is. All right. So then, all right. Okay. Blue wins. Yay for blue. All right. So all you have to do is cut out your item. Super easy. That's how. Okay, there. So, we've cut out our blue flower, and, oh, that's going to look so awesome on there. And we'll just position it on there where we want it. Now, things with transfers. Let's talk about that for a second. All right. The things with transfers is, um, it's really awesome that it gives you these grid lines, so you can line up your project. Um... The other thing you'll get with every transfer package, every one of these packages, you get this really awesome handy dandy tool. This awesome handy dandy tool makes it so you can um, 
get the project adhered to the, the surface that you're trying to work with. So, all you have to do is you see there's a paper sheet and then there's this plastic sheet. You just peel off the paper sheet and then you're left with the plastic sheet. Now, the back of the transfer is going to be real sticky. So make sure you don't touch it with your fingers or sometimes what I've done is actually accidentally stuck it on the table. Um, the table got a new transfer, but I didn't have the transfer for my project, so I had to pick another one. Um, so just be careful, because um, much like the stamp, where once you lay it down, you're committed, um, the transfer is the same way. Once you lay it down, you're committed. So, let's figure out where I want this. And I think I'm just going to lean right like that in the middle there. And you just put it on wherever you want it. And you just lay it down. And then with your hand, you'll just kind of press it down. So then you end up with this. And so now it's adhered to the surface. And it's where I want it. Then you take this handy dandy tool and all you're gonna do, I hope you can see this. I don't know if you can. Let me try it this way. All you, all you have to do is rub on this transfer. You just rub it across the transfer. Make sure that you've got the plastic side up and you just rub, and rub, and rub and rub all right okay now I've done a lot of rubbing on there and so now I can start peeling it up and so I don't know if you can see I don't know if you can see this. All right. So basically what you'll do is you'll start pulling up the plastic. And you want to make sure that as you start to pull it up, if you see any little bit of transfer still on your plastic sheet, just lay it right back down and go over it again. Easy peasy. Lay it back down and then go over it again. And so as you're pulling it up, See, I have a piece not coming off, so I'll lay it right back down and rub on it again. And then gently pull up again. Now sometimes, even with top coat, some transfers might get a little persnickety about coming off. So you just gently pull up as you're rubbing. There we go. I hope you guys can see this. Can you, you can see? Okay, good. Yay. I like that. Thank you, Miss Sharman. Almost done, I promise. That's how fast this is. The little tiny tip of this leaf doesn't want to stay. There we go. It's like I'm telling you, stay down. Okay. Now, don't throw this away just yet. What I do is I take it and I use it and I rub on my transfer to make sure it's all down and adhere to my project. So I just kind of give it a good once over and make sure it's all flat. Okay, now we can throw it away. Here we are. Isn't that pretty? But we're not done yet. Pretty cool. Now, the thing with transfers 
is you don't have to put any top coat or anything over that. This transfer is on there and it's good to go. So you don't need to put any kind of top coat or anything. Um, transfers you can use on um, wood, metal, glass, uh, plastic, mirrors. Um, you can use transfers on just about every single surface. Um, the only uh, surface that you have to um, kind of be careful of is when you use it on um, glass um, or even mirror is that you don't want to spray it with Windex or anything like that. You want to just use a dusting um, rag um, because if you put liquid over it, um, it might cause your transfer to um, break up or something. So just be careful if you put it on um, a glass um, or a mirror, um, just use a dusting rag to dust it. All right. Now, now that we've done this, now the last phase is we got to antique it. So we want it to look a little bit vintagey like this one, so you can see the difference. How this one still looks pretty new. This one has a little bit of antique -y. So we're going to put some brown wax on that. Now, brown, so wax is a sealer. You don't need to put anything on top of that once you've put it down. Um, it's also good to go. And you can just take a small cloth. And all you need to do for giving it that kind of antique vintage vintagey look is literally just put a little bit of wax on the edges of the board. And I do the sides too, because I want it to wrap all the way around. And so don't be afraid to just put glumps of the wax on, because the next step after this is that we are going to come back through and we are going to wipe some of this off. So, just brush that on. And then on the top, give it a good wax. Give it. Now, I did the corners in a little bit. Um, I just like it that way. You don't have to do it that way. Um, you could actually do the whole entire piece with um, some brown wax over it if you wanted. So if you wanted the whole piece to look aged, you can do that. You can put the wax over the transfer. That is fine. Um, and then the other edge. So... This is why I say everything you do can always be fixed or corrected or anything. So even if I got my stamping a little bit off and I was crooked, as you could see, it wouldn't have mattered. So, oops, I didn't do the bottom edge. Let me do the bottom edge really quick. Put a line of wax down there. All right. All right, so now we have this. And I can put that up against that. So now all we have to do is take another paper towel or cloth. I use shop cloths, you know, those, those ones you can buy in a, like a, giant bag of cloths in the painting aisle. I use those all the time. So what you can do is then you just take it and you just rub it and you can take off as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, so I rub the edges, I rub all around it. So usually the first go around, I just take off, you know, quite a bit. And then you can go around and um, you might do this process two or three more times. Taking it off, adding more. It really is up to you. It's your preference of what you'd like. 
And so you see how it's kind of coming together now? Easy peasy. All right, let me get another towel and we'll wipe a little bit more off. There are so many projects that you can get out of one transfer. Um, it's amazing. Um, and you can use these on so many different surfaces. Um, the stamping I've done also on cloth bags because um, our ink is permanent ink. And um, once you heat set it, um, it's good to go on cloth. And so um, some other projects I've seen done, I haven't had a chance to do them yet, is, um, you know, pieces of drop cloth. You could stamp on drop cloth. You can even paint fabric with our Dixie Belle paint. Um, and you would just use one of our waxes to help give it some um, softness after you've painted it. So there's many, many different things you can do with these um, products. But, you know, great gift ideas, home decor, make things the way you want them to be instead of buying it already pre-made and you're like, oh, I kind of like it, but I'm not too sure. This way you can make it the way you want. All right, so this is already, so I've, this is now my second time over it. And as you can see, I'm still taking off quite a bit of, quite a bit of wax. So, like I said, you can leave this as dark as you want it. You can make it as light as you want it. All right. This looks pretty good. I don't know. What do you guys think? You like it? Was that easy? Now, you can do so many things with just this. All done. You can give it as a gift. Um, you can put command strips on it and hang it on the wall. The other thing I thought of was you could take a stand and you could put it on a stand. And now you've got a a great picture for your table or your shelf. How awesome is that? Um, so many, many great things that you can do with some of the simplest um, products. So all we used was a piece of wood, some chalk paint, some top coat, a little bit of wax, and a transfer, and a stamp. So easy, easy, easy. And there's this one too. Now, so that project is done. It's already done and it's dry. Look at that. Fast. Fast, fast, fast. There is a couple more transfers I want to show you guys um, that we have here in our store. And one of them... I think is going to be our next weekend's project. So I'll show you that in a second. This is one of our newest transfers. How cute is this sweet little bunny right here? And that little mushroom. Let's open this one up and take a peek. It's like Christmas when we get these. Oh, this one, if you notice on the back, oops, it shows you all the different little pieces that you can use for projects. Look how many projects you could get out of that. So many ideas, so many ideas. Right, Kendra? It's super easy. Super easy. And if you're going to someone, maybe they're having a wedding or something, I mean, you can make something like this pretty simple um, in under an hour 
and you have a wedding gift. All right, so let's take a quick peek at this one. This is the newest one. Look at that bird. That's pretty cool. There's the bunny. There's even a hedgehog. That's cute. Oh, my sheets are falling out. Here's another one and some birds. Oh, that's pretty. There's a fox, a rabbit, some mushrooms. So you can make a great springtime um, picture or um, wall plaque. And then there's one more sheet. Let's see what the last one is. Oh, the last one has strawberries on it. So this is a great one. Great new transfer. All right. So, all right. So my idea for the project for next Saturday, you guys can tell me what you think. This is my idea. Um, I've been working on clay pots a lot lately, um, just because it's springtime, um, time to plant things. And so let me just show you a couple of the ones I've done. So this one I did in lemonade, the color lemonade um, from Dixie Belle um, with cotton. And so this is a blend of the lemonade and cotton. And then on here is another transfer that comes from our pots transfer, is upside down, no, our pots transfer. And this transfer is meant specifically, well, actually, I mean, you don't have to use it just on pots, but um, it's basically the labeling they would use on old clay pots and things. And so, as you can see, I've used this transfer a lot because I've got it in pieces. Um, but what's great about this is it not only comes in black transfers, but there's blue, and then there's even, oh, I think I missed the page. Oh, you can't even see it because it's so transparent. This is white transfers, so I'll show you some examples of those. So I thought it would be kind of a lot of fun if we did a clay pot next Saturday, and I can show you how to blend colors and apply the transfer to a pot. Now you can use these um, outside as long as you protect them with a top coat of um, that's meant for outside. So an outdoor clear coat um, at the hardware store, and you would protect the pot from the outside and the inside. Let me show you some other examples of what we have. So here is a gray one that I did with um, blending of um, fluff on this one, but you can see there's the white transfer. So that's the white transfer on a pot. And then we also have options and I brought this to show you, is you can put clay molds on clay pots as well. So um, this one is painted green with a little bit of um, white in it. And then Iron Orchid Design um, has a sunflower mold. And as you can see, mine's well used. These are silicone molds. And you can use these for resin, you can use them for clay. They're also food safe. So you can do um, a mold. And I use clay. And this is the Iron Orchid Design clay I used. Let me show you that real quick here. Iron Orchid Design air dry clay. Super easy again. All you would do is put your clay 
in the mold. Well, actually, put a little cornstarch down first, clay in your mold, pull your mold out. Put glue on it, and then you would put it on your clay pot. So we can do these two types of things next Saturday. Does that sound like a fun plan? Yeah, it's the season for pots, isn't it, Kay? It sure is the season for pots. So I think we're going to do that next Saturday. Um, we'll do the blending, and then we'll do the um, transfer on one, and then we'll do a blending on another one, and then we'll do a mold. Great. And um, we'll walk through all that, and I'll show you how to paint them, how to blend it, how to seal it, and then... Um, there you go. So you can have pots for all your plant needs. Well, gosh, friends, um, that's what I have for today. Uh, next Saturday, it'll probably be around the same time frame, um, around um, 4 o'clock. Make sure you like the page. Um, that lets you to follow. And then... Um, if you get a chance, spread me out to your friends and family so we can have more um, makers join us or those who like to watch um, things being made uh, join us as well. Um, I appreciate you being here on my very first live. Um, it's been a great, great fun. Um, as I get used to doing this, uh, we'll get... Uh, We'll get better at it, more fluent at it. But, and I won't forget things such as Dana saved me. Don't forget, Dana's poor expression. She saved me with the heat tool. Um, otherwise, thanks everyone for joining us today. I appreciate it. And I will put everything out on Monday for our project for pots. And... Um, either stop by the shop if you want to pick up some items um, or if you have um, other items at home that you can use, please follow along as we're doing it. Um, it'll be great fun. All right. Have a great rest of your day, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kay.